Hello everyone, my name is Timmy Dad. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to America Track Simulator, our Depth Free Explorer series. I think this is episode 9, or will be episode 9. I hope you're all well. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. So, just a quick job today. We've got a load of coal from Liebherr into Home Depot. We're going to from Vernal, Utah to Cedar City, Utah. We're rolling in the Peterbilt 579 high rise sleeper. Um, let's get after it. So it's just a short job. It's only a few hundred miles. It's paying us. I may be the vice president of America, but you're the president of this car. Great. It's time to take action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you may have heard there, we've got a new voice on our sat nav. I did speak about it briefly on one of the other episodes that I wanted to get a different voice going. And I did find one that I like, so we'll see how we get on with Mr. Morgan Freeman. Uh, but yeah, just a quick job. Uh, it's paying a dollar sixty-one a mile. It's a load of coal, so we'll get this going, and uh, we'll have a quick chat along the way. But so it's just going to be a shorter episode today, just to kind of keep the series ticking and uh, catch up with everyone. Turn right. Okay, thanks, Morgan. Appreciate it. Turn right. Will do. Pin, turn right. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, like I said, just a quick one, just to keep us going, keep everyone updated. I've done some jobs between. Uh, we're currently on over, just over fourteen and a half thousand dollars which is great. Some good progress on that. Oh, watch out, Mr. Pass. No, 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 no. <laughs> Gonna stay there, or you're gonna start driving. Oh, that was a close one. So yeah, I hope you are all enjoying the series so far. We are heading nicely towards our goal. As I was saying, we've got over fourteen and a half thousand dollars at the moment. This job, I think, should push us just above fifteen thousand dollars. Which, um, if you remember, we are looking to get to around twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five? Eh, not twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five thousand um, dollars cash to be able to buy the truck. Are we a light or are we a stop sign? I think we're a uh, stop sign. And I hate these ones because they are tricky to get out of. You could stop right there. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we, we're trying to get to $25,000 available cash for the truck and with a bit extra for first month's running fuel costs and that kind of thing uh, there's a guy up in portland which i've been chatting to he said he's got an option on a truck for me so hopefully when we get a chance uh, when we've got the available funds we will head on over to portland and see what he's got for us Um, the VTCs go really well. We've got 11 drivers now, which is amazing. We're closing in on our first 100,000 miles completed. So if you do want to join the VTC, we have spoken about it at length on the series here, but everyone is welcome. We are aiming to be the most relaxed VTC out there. The reason I started it was because the VTCs that I tried to join, they were overly rule heavy. So I thought, well, why not? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I thought, why not? I will start my own, kind of be relaxed, if you can do a job a month, that's awesome, can't do a job for two months, no stress, do whatever, drive as much or as little as you can, but if you do want to join, check the link in the description, there's two links, one's the Discord, which has got all the information of how you want to apply, and if you're just interested in seeing our stats, then there's a Trucks Book link, which is our company profile, and that will take you to the company profile, where you can see all of the drivers, their stats, how many fines we're racking up, how many uh, miles we're covering, all of that kind of good stuff. 
but yeah, we'd love to have you on board if you do want to drive for us. Do uh, do let us know. We've got a bunch of good guys there. We are working on skins and all that kind of stuff. So I'm currently working on uh, ATS skins to begin with because I will want to get a skin for the truck that we got in the series here. So it made sense for me to start there. Uh, Kieran Butcher 2 is, or the Chaotic Farmer as he's known as in the Discord. He is has been working on some skins on trailers. Um, and then once I'm once I've got the pack ready for ATS, I'll get started on a pack for ETS as well. Then on all the base game trucks is where I'm starting, and then I'll be looking to add mod trucks as we progress because I'm you know aware that not everyone runs the base game trucks. Uh, hopefully we're not going to be stuck in this traffic too long. It's just a red light, so hopefully we'll be able to get on the road again. Uh, but yeah, since the last job, uh, since the last episode, I have done a few jobs which has pushed our money up. Um, with the aim, I think this is going to be coming out on Thursday the 28th, I think this will be coming out. And we are looking to try and get our get ourselves in a position that we can afford a truck by a week Sunday. So 10 days away from this episode is where I would like to be in a position that we can afford a truck of our own. So I will continue to do the jobs in between because that's working quite well at the moment. Most of the jobs have been like heavy haulers jobs actually because they're the ones that pay the best. So those are probably the ones I'll stick to between episodes. Like the other day, I was uh, carting a, um, a little, I think it was like a little biplane. It was part of an advertisement for Red Bull, apparently. So I, carted, I transported that across the country. And that was about a thousand miles. And then the job after that was a big uh, statue of a guy riding on, riding on a horseback. Uh, but I do put pictures of all the jobs in in my Discord, so if you are interested of seeing what jobs I've been doing in between and what the cargo has been, again, head over to that link in the, de in the description and uh, you can see what I've been up to then. And that's been it really. I have been off work this week, which is awesome. I'm enjoying some time off, the vacation time as they would say in the States. Um, we call it annual leave over in here. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been doing, just enjoying that. We have, we went out to breakfast and all that kind of stuff. Had, my internet went down for a few hours, which was annoying. Um, and today, day of recording this after I've just dropped the kids down to the school. So after we've done recording here, we are going to donate blood. So that's where I'm off to after the recording has finished. And then we should be going out to get some lunch before picking the kids up from school later on today. The kids have got a... Uh, so in the, in the UK, they call them inset days. Uh, basically, it's like a tre teacher training day. So they're... Two of the kids are off school tomorrow for that, which was very kind of the teachers to uh, eat into my week off. Keep right. So we'll probably do something with that. I've promised my one of my lads that we'll do a science day because he's very into science. So we'll do some. Um, experiments and things like that. We've got a couple of books with experiments in. Keep right. So do let me know in your comments below how you're enjoying Mr. Morgan Freeman on the uh, sat-nav. Oh, that was coming in a bit hot then. Thought we were going to plow straight into that. To 
just as I crunch through the gear set. I'm not a truck driver, I'm just a lowly man. I don't know the, necessarily the best way of shifting the gears. What I tend to do um, is would, for example, go 135 instead of going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, and etc. I tend to, when I'm pulling off, go 135 um, and then depending on how fast the road is going up to 7 and so on and then probably when I get up to about uh, gear 8 or 9 would go up incrementally from there. Like I said, I'm not a truck driver. I don't know if that's the way that it should be done. It's a way it works in the context of the game. think from a fuel economy standpoint that is probably quite good I think maybe who knows um, that is something we'll have to really deep dive into once we've got a truck because obviously the fuel will be coming out of our pocket then so we're going to be wanting to preserve as much fuel as possible you know we're talking the difference between a gallon a mile is uh, is quite substantial over over hundreds and thousands of miles so we will need to probably have a proper deep dive into how to make sure that we are running as efficiently and fuel economically as possible. I don't want to be buying fuel unnecessarily because it's going to be hurting our pocket. We're doing ourselves a big favour though by not having uh, any loans provided we can get that far because we're not going to be having to factor loan payments into into the cost of jobs so that will greatly help us out there not having to worry about making the minimum payment each time continue straight Jake break Brrr. let's bring the speed down a bit so coming into do shares I think that said on the sign do chairs Take break. Just love it when people pull out and then they don't they don't keep the speed going. They don't make any effort to hurry up. And you've got to slam on. And when you're in a truck like this, take some time to get up to speed. Uh, it was pretty awesome last night. We got on the we got on the uh, multiplayer server with none other than Mr. Farquhar. Scruffy was there, Lynn was there, I was there, it was a great time, Red was there in the chat, I think he was out on the road at the time, he trucks in the United States for real, uh, a couple of other people were in the chat, that was a great time, on gear, idiot, let's go, oh, Amber Gambler, who's slow on the gears, uh, yeah it was good on Saxthorpe map, on his multiplayer server as link on my I think there's a link on my bio thing about me thing or on my page somewhere if not it would be in the description to his channel check him out he does trucking in the in the in Europe on ETS2 he also live streams occasionally on ATS he's been pumping down some miles for SD logistics as well which is greatly appreciated and he does farm sim as well. He's also got a variety channel, which I think he is pumping out Starfield and Tomb Raider at the moment. So if that's your bag, check that out. I think that's Mr. Farquhar Plus. He's recently had a rebrand of his logos and everything, which are looking pretty damn sweet, if I do say so myself. Um, so yeah, go check him out. He's an awesome guy. Really good community guy. Uh, he's helped me out massively. He uh, gave me the confidence to start putting videos out, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going well so far. I'm enjoying the process. 
I do find it somewhat stressful at times just because trying to plan a schedule around life and then when I've got ideas for stuff that I can't like bring to fruition as, as um, oh dear words uh, words are tough yeah um, yeah I can't bring it to life in the way that I expected or wanted to or as frequently as possible which in that vein does bring me on to Buckland Farm series I think I alluded to it in the last episode I am struggling with that series because of the length of time now I'm new to editing and I am very slow at it now it takes me probably three hours or so to record an episode of that and then it will take me I think um, additional five to six hours to edit that then because I am shit so I'm not dropping that series because I love the map I tested the map which I, I appreciate makes me somewhat biased we should put our lights on but I want to continue that series because the challenge we've got going over there being able to produce everything on the farm from scratch ourselves not buying any external inputs into the map that is a really exciting challenge. Fog is heavy here. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing, I'm having some sound issues with my OBS again, which I have, I think, provisionally fixed. I need to do some little bit more testing. Whoa. Uh, but if that's fixed, then we're going to turn that into a stream... Yeah, we're going to turn that into a stream series. So we'll do a once a week stream on Buckland. Which will be awesome. There's a train coming somewhere. I don't know where the track is, but it's coming. Uh, so yeah, that's the plan with Buckland. If I always step there. If I can get my sound issue sorted, which I think are potentially done, I just need to do a bit more testing, then we will stop stalling and come on. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll turn that into a stream. So we'll do once a week stream on that map, probably a Friday, Saturday or a Sunday night. And uh, that will keep that series going. Just while I try and figure out this editing situation. If I could, like I said, if I could get quicker at editing, if I could cut the down, if I could cut the editing time down by half, that would be awesome. Because then that's easily, easily achievable. Because at the minute, when I'm spending probably. 10 hours or so on one episode that's 30 to 50 minutes long that is not a huge investment on my time that sounds silly I'm not sure but that's generally where I'm at with it Sharp turn. Yeah, like I said, I do want to keep that series going because I love that map and I love that challenge that we've got going on over there. And I think it's a very interesting challenge. And again, I at this point, I still don't even know if it's doable. So it's one we'll find out together, I guess. some speed up uh, I do have another issue which I need to try and put some time into resolve which I got into a semi heated debate on, to, on uh, Facebook with someone about where my on certain jobs on this game the brake pedal seems to be overly sharp and overly sticky it's like the brakes jam on 
So I need to, I'm pretty sure it's a mod issue because I've got another save, which I, another, another profile, which is like my testing profiles where I test things out before I put them into this main profile for the series, like mods and stuff. If I run that on vanilla with no mods installed, the issue goes away. As soon as I'm back on here with, with all my mods installed, which, by the way, on a side note, I am working on a video to go through all the mods that I use. Because there was some interest around around that. But yeah, when I run a vanilla profile, the issue goes away. Um, but when I run this profile, the issue is back. So I need to put some time in to go through the hundred or so mods that I run to find out which one is causing the issue. The issue is when I apply the brakes. So if I'm if I'm in traffic now, so I'm getting up to speed. Someone pulls out in front of me, so I I just generally gently press the brakes to, to take some speed off to avoid a collision. Obviously, then the truck comes screaming to a halt. Not screaming literally, but it will come to a complete stop, and then it's as if the brakes are jammed on. Now there were a couple of things that I looked at, so. There was air brake simulation, which I looked at, which I didn't have that activated, so it kind of been that. I wondered if the air system was running out of air, so it wasn't that. Um, there is an emergency braking function in the game to do with adaptive cruise control, which I thought maybe it was that, but that was also turned off. Stay there, please. Thank you. So it wasn't that. Um... But yeah, it's, it's something that I'm running, I think, which I put it on Facebook because I'm on a couple of Facebook groups. And I thought, well, someone somewhere must have run into this issue before. Yeah, so I thought someone must have run into this issue before. I can't be the first person. And some guy, I won't name because obviously that's not fair. But some guy messaged me, commented back. He said, uh, I don't know why people don't bother. You know, I don't know why people don't bother to understand this game before they play it. If you don't understand the settings, you shouldn't be playing the game. But I said, well, man, hang on. It's not the case of not understanding the settings. I understand the settings perfectly fine. As, to, as Mr. Farquhar alluded to in his most recent ETS2 episode, I am probably somewhat anal about settings, rules, um, making sure that I am got everything all as perfectly as I can. I do a lot of research behind the scenes and especially around game settings to try and make sure that A, what I'm making is real as realistic as possible. I'm not a real truck driver. I've never been to the States. I've never driven a real truck in the UK. So I try and, you know, I'm doing all of this as, as someone that has no real world experience. So everything is new to me. And I put a lot of research in behind the scenes. I've spent a lot of time chatting to Mr. Redneck Gamer, asking him a ton of questions to try and find out, to make sure what I'm doing is as accurate as can be. And that extends into game settings. I like to understand what every setting does. On a simulation game such as this, it benefits everyone from you guys to me, getting right gear, to have the right information and the right playstyle. So I was a bit offended about that. He then went on to tell me that it was 100% without fail the emergency braking thing for the adaptive cruise control, which I then also told him at the same time there wasn't any need for the sarcasm. I understand the sentence perfectly well and make a point of doing so. But he didn't like that either. He said he wasn't being sarcastic. I said, yes, you were. And he, I then also proceeded to tell him that the issue that he, or the fix that he told me was uh, not what the issue was because I already knew that was turned off because I'd already spent some late night hours trying to diagnose the problem myself. So he didn't like that either, and then he started to proceed to tell me, oh, well, I used to test the game, but when it was in beta, and I was like, look, man, I appreciate you trying to help me, I genuinely do, but if you don't want to help me without being sarcastic the whole time, then just, just don't bother, because 
I'm not an idiot. You don't need to treat me like an idiot. I don't like to waste people's time. Ultimately, everyone's got shit to do. And I don't want my problem to become your problem. And I'll only ever ask for help as an absolute last resort when I've done as much Googling, as much troubleshooting as I can myself. So, yeah, if you know of that issue, if you've had that issue yourself on ATS, where when you apply the brakes even slightly, you come to a full stop and the brakes are stuck on, then you've got to jam the brake pedal a couple of times to get it to release. Le I would love it if you could let me know in the comments what the issue is, because I don't want to have to keep stopping and restarting all the time, because sometimes it's jammed on for, for minutes and... You know, that might not sound like a major thing, but in the scheme of recording things, if I'm having to spend up to upwards of five minutes of recording, mashing around with my brakes, which is then stuff that I've got to cut out in the edit. That's extra time and you know, it's not something I want to be happening, I want to be able to just get on the road. So I, I my process for that's gonna be I run map mods, I absolutely do not think it's those because why would it be? Because to my knowledge, map mods have absolutely no bearing on the truck's performance. I run a couple of mods for physics, realistic physics. I don't think it's those, but I am going to take those off one by one as a test. What I'll actually probably do is I'll take a screenshot of all of my mods and the order that I've got them in because I know that order works for me. And then I'm going to take all of the mods except map mods off. And then I'm going to start adding the other mods back one by one until I find out which one is causing the problem. And that's the name of uh, playing modded games. If you play modded games, that's just something you have to deal with. Some of the time is that some of the mods cause you issues, cause you conflicts, which you then have to try and troubleshoot. I mean, it comes down to me as well. I should be more meticulous in the way that I add mods. I should take a note of the mods that I add because if I'd have taken a note of the mods I'd added and when, then it would be it would narrow down the pool of issues much much easier because I would know right. I've only been having the issue from this date. Oh, in my notes, I added these mods on this date, and that's after that. So it's got to be one of them. And then instead of having to go through a hundred or so mods, I'd only be having to go through maybe three or four or five. Yeah, there was some interest in, in the mod video um, about what mods I run, what map mods I run, the order and all that kind of stuff. So I am working on that and we'll bring that to you just as soon as I can. And I am also working on a tutorial video for trucks book to do with the S, um, SD logistics so again I'll bring that just as soon as I can as well so we should be trucking on quite nicely I don't know if we can see on here how much further we've got so let's bring up the on-screen sat nav uh, 110 miles to go hour or 54 minutes should be making some nice progress on that Again, driving in the dark. Um, we did have a bit of daytime driving on this, so it's not too bad. So another development to talk about on the uh, channel is a um, good friend of the channel, Lynn, has assumed a position of creative director. He uh, has become my sound off guy. We spent quite almost every night for probably a month or so chatting over on Discord late into the night. He's in the States, I'm in the UK, so when he's getting in, getting on from work is sometime between half nine UK time and sort of 11 UK time, PM. So it's quite late. And then once you get chatting, it, the, the hours just slip away, which, you know, that's what community is all about. And that's what I'm trying to build as well as that's what Mr. Farquhar has built. So we spend a lot of time chatting in the evenings and he's become my sound off guy. So I, Try and, try and not spoil the series for him because I don't want him to know everything 
but I chat to him about about what I've got planned or what I think is a good idea and then he thinks he thinks about it and tells me no that's a terrible idea don't do that or yeah that's a great idea or that's a great idea but have you thought about doing it like this instead so yeah he's <laughs> we're, we have a little joke about it but he's he's taken on role of creative director we are tracking along nicely here we are looking at a nice starry midnight sky I don't actually know if it's midnight let's check uh, it's nearly midnight 11.41 p.m. let's see if we can give you some outside shots not that you'll be able to see them of course but let's hope I don't crash Still not great at that. <laughs> Still trying to get master that, but we're better than we were. Oh, good. Thank you, sir. Thank you for going in, because I was just about to try and come in underneath you, because you are in my way. Uh, another issue, or not issue, another thing that you guys could help me on, perhaps. So in the um, US, the trailer brake and parking brake are on like a push, push twist knob lever to apply and release. Now I am in the process of building my own button box, which has been a longer ongoing project. And I'd started initially with the goal, with the intent of using it on ETS. So I bought a lever, which is what the U UK trucks generally have as a parking brake. But the US trucks don't have that, and I've been looking for a button to buy, but I don't know what it's called. So if you can't see them because it's dark, but if you see this is the thing that I'm having the problem with is I put the brakes on and we're now coming to a halt. which is really annoying because you know, it takes such a long time to get back up to speed. And then what happens is you get the traffic building up behind you. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna get rear-ended one of these days. Yeah, basically you've gotta like mash the brakes to get it to release the air brakes. I also don't have any suggestions in my head of the mods that I run, which one would be causing that because I don't run any brake specific mods. The only mod that I even run which is related to air, which I think I was running before I even had this problem, is uh, air ride seats. But yeah, it just makes braking really, really difficult to anticipate because I don't want to have to stop every single time that I'm applying the brakes and then restart. And it seems to do it whether it's a mod truck or whether it's a base game truck as well, which is why I definitely think it's mod related. Lost my train of thought. I think we're coming into our delivery city now, Cedar City. I think that's where the delivery was. I think if you can see on the top left of the sat nav, actually, that's the flag just coming into view there. Yeah, we're going to be coming off of this next ramp here. I think we're very, very close. So we'll be coming off here. Just up this on right off ramp. Thanks, Morgan. Appreciate your help, man. Exit right. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Keep left.
in 400 meters. Turn. I'm not sure what the park job's going to be like on this because it's only a sort of standard trailer, so I would imagine they'll probably have us in some kind of tricky spot. It's not one of those uh, triples that we've been running. So just coming up on the Home Depot now, coming up on the left. Uh, that's Hoods, so that's not it. It's just after this junction. It's just down there. And are we a store in here or are we a depot? But it's been another good trip altogether. No major incidents. We actually didn't have any, I don't believe, traffic uh, hold ups in the way of like crashes or anything like that, diversions, which is good, because we've had a couple of them recently. I had one job which I'd got basically all the way through and had to uh, do a 200 mile diversion because there was a incident block in my exit. Righty, so we're coming in here. Turn right. To go right. Yeah, I think it's a home Home Depot depot. Turn left. Rather than a store. Look at left. Slow down for the gate check. You've arrived. It's been my honor and duty to see you through this mission. Appreciate Morgan. Take care, bro. Hey buddy, thanks for opening the gate. Alright, let's see where we're at in the park job. Around the back. Hopefully, we can get down here. Yep. Alrighty. Got a trailer blocking the way there. Yep. There we are between trailers. So, let's hope we can do this. One thing I do want to get better at with the parking is being able to do it in cab, but I am just not there yet. Oh, wrong way. That was going really good until I turned the wheel the wrong way. That trailer. All right, this time, guys, this time, yeah. That'll do for us. Let's straighten up. Neutral parking brake on. And uh, turn the engine down. And uh, what's the command? T. And drop the load. Alrighty, guys, all done. 331 miles down. Nine hours driving time.
70 gallons of fuel consumed we've earned ourselves 568 dollars for that and we've just nipped up to level eight which is great so i'm going to continue on that and um, we're going to put up on uh what are we going to do uh let's do some explosives will we do that no let's do some flammables that might get us some like fuel yeah so we do flammable liquids because that will give us some fuels like diesel and kerosene and petrol that kind of stuff so we'll apply that take a quick look in our logbook last two jobs so we did an Ataturk statue which was three thousand and ninety five dollars for that 1327 miles we did the advertising element of red bull which is actually the um <clears throat> The plane that I talked about, and we had $1,438 for that. And I think the tractor, I'm not 100% sure if that was the... No, that wasn't the last episode, the rock bucket. Was that? The rock bucket was the last episode, the bonus episode. So we did the tractor as well, which was from Fort Stockton to Lubbock. And that was uh, $214. So all in all, guys, we are pumping up nicely. We're $15,091. We are headlong into our target. So I will leave it there for now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy the episode, please give it a like, thumbs up, um, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. I appreciate, I appreciate you all so much. If you do want to drive for SD Logistics, the link in the description to the Discord will give you all of the information that you need to join RVTC. It's an amazing place to be. Our guys are pumping in the miles, and I couldn't be more pleased. But until next time, guys, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.